Let me know when you're ready. Uh, give me a second. Yeah. Hey, don't forget to hit the record button, too. I got you. Are we live? We're live. We're live. Okay. All right, everybody. Okay. Welcome to Keeping It Straight, episode 12. I'm Shannon Hires alongside with Cole Huggins. And today we got on Mr. Billy Walker. How's it going today, Billy? That's going, buddy. A lot of phone calls here lately. Let's go. Is there a reason why we had a lot of phone calls? Yeah, because we had a, a fiasco up there in a, at Buckshot Speedway this weekend. A lot of shit went down that shouldn't have, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, it was, uh, I'll start from the top if you want me to. Yeah, go ahead and, and, and let us know, you know, from the beginning to the end of what happened up there at Buckshot. That way the people can we understand what went on. We had a decent turnout. They said they average six cars every weekend. They have a really low car count, and we had 20. So it wasn't bad. Um, not not what we expected, but it wasn't bad. Drivers meeting, all that went okay. And when we got to the tower, uh, they was they wanted uh they, they wanted me to make the calls, but not on the radio. Then I told myself, just give me the radio. I need to make the calls, you know. So I did end up making all the calls. And when we got to the, we did the redraw. And a guy there that won his heat race, he took the rear challenge for an extra 1200 bucks on top of the 2000 to win. And uh, I was like, well, that's good. Maybe it calls a good racing, you know. We get it up there, go to the feature, and we, he told me right at the front, he said, you got 30 minutes. I was like, that's going to be pretty hard for 30 laps, but 30 minutes, we'll try our best, you know, get it in. And we run for uh, 20, I think 27 minutes. He said, y'all got three minutes left. So I said, he said, you want to go green, white, checkered? I said, no, uh, let's give them one more shot. And then if they have a caution, then we'll go, then we'll go green, white, checkered. And uh, so, well, they made about, at that, at that point, Shannon, the, the guy that started in the rear was in like seventh or eighth place. And uh, it wasn't really a factor. Well, we made about three or four laps on that next green and caution come out. The 01 car, the guy that started in the rear, was in second. And when he got to second, the guy that was announcing the promoter there said, "Uh, I said we're going green white." He said, "No, we." Got, I said, "We're going green white checkered." He said, "No, we got a few more minutes. We got a few more minutes." So we got. I said, "No, I didn't say we was going to go green white checkered if we had." So he was he was because, backing his story up. He he was backing up from what he originally wanted, which was green white right checkered. You told him no, and now you're trying to give him yeah. what he wanted. Yeah. No. It was see. The first time when it was like, he said, you got three minutes left. You want to go green, white, checker? I said, no, give them a few more laps. I see if they can get some laps in the book. So it was only like 50, halfway, 15 or 16 laps in. I think, I think that's what we got total was 16 in. So it was only about 12 in at the time. He's like, oh, we got three minutes left. You want to go green, white, checker? I said, no, let's give them a few more laps. Let's see if they can put some laps down. And then if they do go again, we'll go green, white, checker. Well, when they had a caution about three or four laps in, I was like, now we're going green, white, checker. Well, at, at that point, the 01 car that started in the rear was in second. He said, oh, we got, we, we can give them a few more minutes, a few more minutes. I said, man, it's been 45 minutes. He said, no, it's been, it's been 33 minutes. It started dead on 10 o'clock. It's 1045 at this point. I was like, we're 15 minutes over. We're going green, white, checker. He said, no, we can, we can go a few more minutes. I said, I'm not asking you no more. I'm telling you, we're going green, white, checker. We're going to end the thing. Let it happen. Whatever happens, happens. Well, they went green, white, checkered, and the 01 car that started in the rear, he ended up winning the race. Well, uh, he won the race, and then people in the tower started cheering. Like, the guy just won the world championship. I was like, man, this is weird, you know. We know who y'all going for. I said, they said, oh, I told you he was going to win. I was like, oh, okay. I said, he has to pass Tech first, then we'll give him a check board if he wins. You know, so so we'll, we'll take care of it. Well, we'll go to Tech down there, and... I walk across the racetrack, and my guys, my tech guy's already up under the back of the car looking. He said, he got out. He said, Billy, this car is out. I said, what is it, Nick? He said, the trailing arm. One trailing arm on the left side was down about, I'm going to say, seven inches, seven and a half inches. The other one was down about two inches, probably, like five-inch difference. It was a huge, huge difference. And I told the guy, I said, hey, man, sorry, but um, we're going to throw you out. You know what I mean? I said, your trailing arms ain't right. Oh, we can do that. And I look up, and it's a track on. He said, they can do that. I said, well, let me look. Let me look in the rules. What? So he was, claiming claiming buck, he, he was claiming buckshot rules. Now, did, did it say anything like that in the rule book? Well, their rear suspension rule said, it, it had really vague rules, but it said rear suspension must be stopped. 
Well, that means they should be in the same location on both sides. In two my, and three in my opinion, two and three quarter, or if even if it's three inches, as long as they're both the same. This was blatantly obvious, and I told my tech guy, I said, well, they don't have a measurement on their rules. I said, uh, go ahead and check the wheelbase and see if it's right. If it's right, we'll go there first. And I told the guy, that, uh, my tech guy had already told the car owner that uh, they need to go ahead and pull number two plug out. We got to check out why Billy and the owner, talking about me, were talking to the track owner about what's going on. He said, y'all not putting no uh, hose in my motor. That's what he told my tech man. He said, you're not, you're not. First he said, we got to get a spark, special spark plug tool. And then he said, you weren't going to put that hose in his motor. I was like, okay. We pulled the wheelbase, 106 and 106 and a half, 109 and a quarter on the other side. It was a three inch difference in the wheelbase. Yeah. Which blatantly is yeah. illegal because their rule says 108. One inch. One inch tolerance to the discretion of the tech advisor if the car is in an accident. The car wasn't in an accident and it's way over one inch. So he has no tolerance. The uh, We walked back to the set while, while he was arguing, and there's like 10 of them guys in that. I think mean, the driver, the owner of the track, and like seven crew members are down there arguing. Wanting to holler and cuss at us. I'm like, look, man, holler and cuss all you want. The tape measure don't lie. Well, he walks back there. The tech got us to second place. The motor on it set back, huh, probably six or eight inches. The, the frame was cut out almost all the way to the back of the cross member, and it's sitting all the way inside the cross member. The whole fuel pump's inside the cross member. I was like, dude, come on. He said, dude, I done moved it back forward a little bit. I said, I see where you moved it. He did try to move it, but I said, dude, you didn't move it nowhere near enough. You're out. He had no problem with that. He said, okay, yeah, I see. I understand. And at the meantime, that track owner's over there, look here. Y'all, this car ain't illegal. Y'all measuring from the wrong spot. We measure from the center of the lower ball joint to the center of the rear end housing. The same way I measured the third place car, I mean the second place car, the third place car, fourth place and fifth place. All of them were 108. Every one of them was right. But the first place car was not. And he kept telling us we got to measure from the spindle you got to measure from the outside the wheel. And he got over there with damn screwdrivers and stuck them in the center of the wheel on both wheels and pulled a tape measure. And it was 106 and 109. I was like, damn. all right, now now you're measuring and it's still off. Well, that ain't how you measure at a, at a lineup machine. I said, oh, we don't got a lineup machine. We don't need one. It's, it's done. I said, I'm not arguing, but it's not a discussion. You hired us to come up here and do a job. We're being fair with everybody here. We done DQ'd the second place car also. So, I mean, it's not nothing against anyone. I said third place, we got the spark plug back there. He's out there checking it now. And when a tech guy walks up and tells me that the third place car, the fourth place, and the fifth place all the compression were good on them. And he told the tech guy, he said, what, what's the problem? He said, uh, he, I said, he still want to argue about the wheelbase. I said, I'm not arguing no more. He said, well, he said, he's out. It, it's illegal. It's out. No more questions. He told my tech man, get the fuck out of my racetrack. Don't mean to cuss, but that's what he said. He said, get the fuck out of my racetrack. Well, I turned because the tech man got, he got loud. It was, they, everybody was heated for some reason. Uh, well, we know why, but I tell my tech guys to calm down. Just step over there. When I tell him to step over there, the, the owner of the racetrack pushes me from the side of my shoulder. Pushes me. And, and you know me. I got mad then. I told the track owner, this is exactly like when I told the track owner, I said, I'll tell you what, brother, I try to do a job for you. You don't put your hands on me. I said, if old me, I would have beat the shit out of you. But now I'm just, I'm going to do the right thing. Your ass is going to jail tonight, right in front of everybody at your own racetrack. You're going to jail. Well, he starts backpedaling, backpedaling. Billy, Billy, can we talk? Can we talk? I said, there's nothing to talk about anymore. We've been talking for an hour about the same deal. It's going nowhere. You won't get up under here and measure with me. I want to show you. You won't let me show you because it's the track owner's nephew that owns this car. Ah, there you well, go. So his family well, member. Yes, it's the track owner's nephew. He won 14 races there last year. They was bragging about it. Um, he wants to pull me to the side. Meanwhile, the law is on their way. He said, Billy, um, he was talking to one of, my, one of my guys, my friends that was there. He said, trying to talk to him to talk to me. I said, look, I'll talk. I said, but you ever put your hands back on me, we're going to have big problems. You know, I got really angry. And I told him, I said, look, I'm not worried about the law. I'll take care of the law here. 
what we need to do? He said, no, I'll tell you what we can do. He said, I will go over there with you and get under this car. Will you just tell the law that we took care of it when he gets here? I don't want to get arrested in front of all, all these people. I said, I'm fine with that. You know, I'm fine with that. Let's go over there. Let's check it. While we go to walk back over to the car, the law shows up. I walked right up to the law, said, look here, we got it taken care of. We're going to get up under here and do this job. Y'all good to go. We, we don't need y'all. They left. And below and behold, I said, come on, let's measure. I'm not getting under that car. Mm -mm. I'm like, mother. Mm. I tried my best. I said, I'll tell you what. I'm done arguing. I've checked these other three cars behind them. The 22 cars, the winner in my book. The 89 was second, and the triple X was third. I gave them the checks. I gave them the trophies. They go to get paid. The guy don't pay them. I'm like, come on, man. We get up there to the pay window. Really aggravated me was the second place guy, Shannon. I mean, I don't even know the guy's name. I don't care. But that guy blatantly knew he was illegal. Knew it. Agreed to it. Never said a word, a bad word to me or nothing. Or to the tech guy. But when he went up there to that window and picked up that money for second place because the guy paid him and the other guy. And that just that just rubbed me the wrong way. you stealing from every guy that's behind you in that line. That finished that oh, yeah. race, you stole money from one of them. No matter which way you look at it. You can't. Just to judge a character, he's a local at races there. And I believe so both the, the first and the second place car were locals. Yes, they were local cars. And the third place car was a local car. Oh, and wow. he said he won't be local more. I mean, he was legal. The third place guy was legal. We checked the wheelbase on it. We checked the uh, compression on it. And we checked the carburetor on it. And, uh, and the trailer normally uh, locations. All that was good on that car. And he was a local. And they, they did the local guy that supports them wrong. And of course, what made me the most angry was the guy that picked up that second place money. The first place guy didn't even pick up his money. The owner of the track went up there and signed his name and picked up the money where he wouldn't have to come up there because there was a bunch of people wanting to get in his ass about the, about the deal, taking the money, you know? Yeah. It was a big deal, and it should have been because all the other guys were legal and and passed tech and got screwed by the, by the owner of the track for no reason. I mean, I'm not want to bash the racetrack, but the surface, the surface was great. The racetrack itself was great. Just the people, the man that runs the racetrack. Why do you do, why do you bring us up there? Tell me I'm 100% in control of tech and he don't want to do nothing down there. But when his nephew wins, he's the first person down there. won't know why. Yeah. What does it matter? Why? I don't have no affiliation with nobody that was in that in there at all. I know the guys that come that, that travel with us. Yeah, I know who they are. They get in tech just like the rest of them. We got pictures of every car on their, on their, their wheelbase to show that everybody was right. Because I, I we're 100% fair. It, it, there is yeah. no buddy shit. There's no body paying for anything. I mean, I, like I just told that guy Saturday night, just, buddy, I just can't do, do business with you no more. And I, and I really don't even want to talk to him at that point. You know, I just, I made sure that the guys that did get owed money, got their money before I left because they had the, the finishing order wrong. The drivers had to tell them, hey, he beat me and he, he finished in front of me. It was just a it was just a bad deal, Shannon. And I know yeah. next time it's not to go back, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Just learn your lessons and move on to the next one and, and try to do, you know, the same thing that you're doing or try to do better. Uh, we, it does we're suck, we're you know. Hard. It, it sucks, you know, this is your second race and, 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 and having to do this and it's just – you know, I don't know the reason why they did it. I thought the track did very well on promoting the race. It seemed like every day they had something out, you know, so they were excited for y'all to come, but I, I just don't, I don't get it. I don't get why. I, I, I stand either. I mean, all you had, all we was checking was three things and he couldn't pass any of them. I mean, you know, and I, and to be honest with you, if that track would have stood behind y'all, it would do, done more for the track versus the damage that it has now done to what the call that they made by giving his nephew the win. If he would have stuck I behind did. you and DQ'd his own nephew, he would never have a problem with integrity at his track. Now, I, you know, it's always going to have something in the back of people's mind. You know, am I going to get a fair shake when I go there? I, I, had hate other it series, we, I had other series message me, asked me what happened and they have a race there. And they're not going to put up with it. And they, they'll cancel their show before they go there and have to deal with it because they said yeah. they're in control. I said, well, you have no control there. Yeah. You know, uh, I it, feel bad. 
I feel bad for the guys that 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 got the guy that uh, I think it's Mike Mike Garrett. Mike Garrett. Mike Garrett. Garrett. Yep, number twenty-two. Yeah. Yes, he's the one that really, truly won the race after Tech. I mean, he he's a local there. He races there. He said he races there, and it's not the first time it's happened to him. I was like, man. He said that's the only reason he came to the night where where we would be in control, and lo and behold, we was not in control. We did a job, and it. And you know what I mean? We did a job, but it didn't. We had no authority there. It just, it just rubbed me the wrong way. I, I won't go back there, with my car or with with the series race. Yeah, because you've raced there before, haven't you? One, uh, no. I'll be honest with you, Shannon. I went there. You didn't last go to the year. one that had like? Didn't they have like a three thousand win factory stock race there last year or yeah. something like that? I had won a race up north of there the week before, and I went there the next week because I have a. I got some fans that live over there across the bay from us over in uh, Baldwin County, and they they follow me everywhere I go. And one weekend, their son was racing up there in a little stinger car, and I said, Billy, will you come up here and race? And being they follow me everywhere, I said, hell, I, I, I don't mind doing it for them, you know. I like They got a little, two little girls that love to watch us race, and some mama, uh, grandmother and grandpa. So I went up there and raced, and I got stopped by the guy Coming to find out, it was the same guy that drove the 01 car. Told me I couldn't race there because I had an aftermarket floor pan and firewall last year. And I, I literally turned around in the parking lot and went home. Oh wow! Yeah, I couldn't even race there. I mean, I, it is what it is. It was, their rules said you couldn't run it last year. I didn't know it, so it's not a big deal. It, it was. I never got mad about. It. I just went. Actually, I didn't even go home. I went to Phoenix City and raced and, and, and won over there that weekend. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean. I, I, it went so smooth at why not? And I told everyone, I said, working with Shannon's a lot better than working with a lot of these guys that I don't know. Shannon's easy to work with. He's honest. I said, I, I ain't got to worry about it. These these next races, you know, especially the very next one, I told the guys who y'all are and where we're going the next couple of races. And everyone was like, Billy, this won't happen again. I said, I had no control. And they knew that. And I did stand up for them guys and try to do what was right for the guys. But I can only do so much, you know what I mean? Well, we've already had a couple of folks call us uh, uh, asking about the race, you know, at Pike County coming up. And they've asked rules. And I said, look, this is a series race. It's the factory stock super series coming in. They're doing the teching. You need to call Billy. And I gave him your number. So, you know, I don't know if they gave you a call or what, but. Uh, I've had cars calling me from Louisiana and Texas. Yep. So, this week. No, I, and we, we're a month away, but. They they ready, yeah. I hope we have a good turnout. But a lot, a lot man, of those I, locals, right? Said they're coming. Yeah, I just hate it for you because I know you're just getting kicked off. You're trying to do the right thing. I feel that 100. percent And you know you run into a little bit of roadblock. But the thing is, is you can't let it get you down. You just got to get ready for the next one and do the same thing that you're doing now. What's been hurting me, Shannon, here lately? And and there's a lot of people I'm sure from me watching this are are. Or hear about it. What I'm getting a lot of a lash from people not coming to the races is saying, "Hey, we can, why don't we go to your racetrack and race when we can go local, and we ain't gotta worry about shit when we get to the tech. We just drive on through." That's the local track, local weekly racing that's killing the series races because they know they can go over there and race and drive right on through the tech shed, and when they go to us, they're gonna have to be right. You know what I mean? And yeah. if, if it takes not having the cars by being right. I'm just going to have to lose some cars, you know, because I want it to be a fair race for everybody. Well, you're going to run into that. I mean, it's here's the deal. You know, on a weekly show, I think me and you've talked about this a little bit too, is you got, what, five, six classes maybe running. We'll just say six. And you have to get through tech quick. So you're checking two or three yeah. things in that car, and you're saying, hey, we're clear. That doesn't mean the car is 100%. We don't have enough time to check I, four, I, I stocks, agree four street stocks, four modifieds, four crates. You just, like I said, pick some items for that night. You check. If everybody's good, yep. you go. And it's, it's yep. hard for the local programs. And it does suck. Trust me. I've been put in situations too to where we had to be the bad guys because yep. the local tracks don't necessarily do what they need to do. And it's not necessarily their fault. It's more of a time, time situation. And the fact that the programs move so fast at certain tracks and you got to push that guys out so you can start taking the next class, or we'd be there till Sunday afternoon. Right. I, uh, you know? I agree. 
that's one good yeah. thing about the series is we take over to the other side. Y'all do y'all thing, we'll do our thing, you know what I mean? And and, and it gives them time and I'm and we don't check Shane, we don't go through the cars with a fine tooth comb. We check three things. Each race might be different, might be the same. Ain't gonna tell nobody what we check. You know what I mean? But we're gonna check something different every time. You know, that whatever yeah. we try to keep these guys on the yeah. Straight and narrow, they gonna get it. It's racing. They gonna get away with shit. People's gonna get away with stuff. But just, I mean, just try to. Don't get mad when you get caught. Simple as yeah. that. I've been caught. Other, I know everybody that's racing has been caught cheating before. Just about everybody. The ones that say they ain't never been caught, they ain't never won. Me. You've been caught before, Billy. But, yes, I have. <laughs> yep. A couple times. <laughs> uh, about two or three times. One time being light. One time with a. Uh, one time, not having a piece of lead on the front of the, front of the firewall. Just what did stuff, Outlaw get you for? Did. Didn't Outlaw get you for a carburetor? Shut up. That was $3,000. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you show up with I, a four well, or something? <laughs> no, 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 no. I had a, a XP carburetor, and I ran it over there before, and you can run it at other tracks locally here. My dumb ass didn't read the rules. I just left the XP on there. He told us after the race track, after the race, he said, go to your trailer, take your carburetor off. I'll be able to check it. I laid that rig up on the dash. Hell, we had three other carburetors with us. I didn't know. I laid it up on the dash laughing about it. When they came over there, he, he checked the carburetor first before he DQ'd me. He's like, yep, it'll pass the no-go gauge, but you DQ because it's the XP. I'm like, what the hell? It just that was Brian the Cox, wasn't it? Yeah, and Brian... Brian was nervous about that tech, uh, DQ and me. He's like, oh, Heather, Heather, come here. Let me, let me talk to you. Oh, Heather, Heather ain't driving the damn car. Come on over here. What's going on? I want to know. Can, can we get that Can we get that check back, Heather? <laughs> Hell no. This is already gone. Uh, uh, but no, uh. we gave him the trophy back in the check. And, hey, they got me. I mean, I didn't know you couldn't run the XP at that track. And they, they got me. It cost me $3,000. Damn. That sucks. It ain't. It, it should happen. I mean, like I said, I took and now like a most of the tracks, most of the tracks you can run XP now, right? The same way with the firewall. You can run it now. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm a rule. I'm a rule setter. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. You can run after market firewall and floor pan now. Yep. yep. I don't like the, I don't like the rule they got at the mag where you can set it back 10 inches from the back of the head. You might as well not even run one. It's going to be that far back. I guess My, plenty mine of is in for stock location. Remote. Mine's in stock location, and I got five inches between my distributor and my firewall, and it's still set in stock location. Yeah. So 10 inches, it's going to be, you can put an extra motor behind it. You can about stand behind the motor now, huh? No, oh, yeah. I know why they did that. They, I'll tell you the reason why they did that, Shannon, is where they can see the transmission without having to get up under the car. That's all. That's and the that reason might not why be a bad that. thing. Ah, uh, that's just being lazy. They ain't nothing to lay down on the ground and look. Well, just being lazy. I crawled up under that car the other night myself about five times. Five times myself, and I don't care. I'll get up under there with them. Hell, I'm, I'm used to getting dirty. Yeah. I mean, it, it, that's why they moved it back so far, because I heard that people's running friends, birds, falcons, whatever, that now they can't. They run out to mark a full pound firewall. Some people yeah, think that right off the just top. because you can. You got a few people up north, and they ain't going to say no names. They think just because you moved the firewall, you can change the header on the car. Cannot. Still have yeah. header rules. You know, I mean, I, I'm hoping, you know, sometime, someday that that we can get everybody on the same factory stock rules, kind of like what the straight stock rules are. I mean, it'd be I'm working, nice to, I'm, I'm working. to to see not just one or two tracks, but a region jump onto a sanctioned body or whatever it comes out to be. And we all get on track to where we don't have to do these track rules, but kind of what they got we have going on in Florida and uh, Georgia. Georgia right yeah. Now, isn't it? Yeah. What chance and then we're trying to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but we can't, go, we can't go that route because they would take away so much that we already got. You can't take away from these drivers. Just stop giving. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you can't go say how hey, you can't run a Vortec head or you can't do this and you can't do that. When they already been like that for years, let's stop giving and just, you know what I mean? Don't take nothing, just stop giving. What we got now is what we got. Set up a set of rules and I'm going to have to do that for next year. Whatever, we're all on the same page and go from there. You know what I mean? Try to get with Johnny Stokes, try to get with Rodney Wing, try to get with Shannon and, and, and Cole and, and see if we can't get something for
Uh -oh. The uh -oh. southeast region, you know? Uh, yeah. We lost you for a minute, Billy. Yeah, that's somebody you was got calling back my wife. Home? Yeah, I think we there got you go. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it would be yeah. nice. Uh, it, I mean, just to I make just, it a lot I just got to get with all, the, get with all the, the tracks in the south in Mississippi and Alabama, North Florida, uh, Kentucky, Tennessee area, and... Calling my wife, but no, that, that, just try to get everybody on the same page and, and have a set of rules where you ain't got to do no track rules or you ain't there is no discussion about rules. Everybody's on the same shit. Yeah, that's exactly. the best way to do it. And I'm, and I'm gonna get with them over the winter, uh, end of the year over the winter, and let's say, let's do this. Do you agree? You agree? You agree? And let's go with it. You know, try to get with everybody where everybody's involved and not leave nobody out and they pisses them off and they try to change rules where cars can't come there. You know. Because yep. we got a few tracks around here that likes to set certain set of rules to keep their cars there and nowhere else. You know what I mean? I don't want that. Yeah, and the factory stock, man, believe it or not, I mean, you know, there's a lot of big money getting thrown out. I mean, you got, what, two weekends with back-to-back yep. -back 5,000 to win? And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. And yeah, it's no, happened to Brian Van. My shit's on that. Yeah, it's already happened once. Uh what these tracks don't realize, I'm like, like for instance, I, I ain't going to say the name of the track. There's a track this year that uh, one of the guys that run Magnolia Rules race, he won the race, and he got DQ'd because of something that I don't want to say is necessarily not updated in the rules, but it didn't state in the rules. So it was, sh it was uh, extent shock extensions, basically. You know, we allow those, but the rule book shock wasn't updated. Been okay on the Yep. But he got DQ'd because he has some washers under there, and they included that. They considered that an extension, so they DQ'd him. Uh, but the thing is, we know it. Why not? Can you yeah. can run them. You know, you can run them. That's right. I, I want to remind you before I, I forget. While you're on here and you talk to drivers that I don't talk to, and I talk to some you don't talk to, but the ones that are watching, I've had this problem at both races. Please do not show up at pipe with seat belts that are out of date. I've had some the other night from uh, 2015, 2016, same thing the first race. I mean, she had a set of seat belts. What is, belts. What is, what like is the date that needs to be on the belt, right? You know, as far as this season? Two years. Two years? So you're talking about uh, 2022? It needs to be 2022. Yep. 2022, okay. 2023, 2024. I mean, it, it, it's, it's going to... It'd be, it wouldn't be good if they got there and got hurt with a seatbelt and they're going to go back to me being on pre-race tech. Have the fire extinguisher. We ain't really had about one or two of them didn't have a fire extinguisher. Um, that, that's mostly what we're checking in pre-race is just your fire extinguisher, your seatbelts, your, your neck. Make sure you got... And man, when I went to New Jersey, they have a state trooper that does tech there. You wouldn't believe it. That dude wants your damn driver license, your helmet, your fire suit, your gloves and your uh, neck brace, and he wants to see it inside the car. I'm like, Wasn't there the one track that you went top? to this year that, that got on to you for having a hole in your gloves or your, your fire suit or something? My fire suit. Yeah, my fire <laughs> suit. I had, a little, I had a hole in it. I was already having hell, and he's going to say something about it. <laughs> yeah, I remember you that little guy just that. kept on me the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, tell him, you tell him my really ain't got no damn fire suit. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of people yeah. don't realize everybody's like, well, why you didn't you tell me at pre-tech? Pre-tech is not a it's not an end all be all. Tech. There you go, end all be all. All we're doing is some quick checks, looking at casually to see if we see anything wrong and let you know that hey, you need to change this before you start racing. Pre-tech is nothing more well, than a courtesy check. That's and all our it pre -race is. Tech, our pre-race tech is for our factory stock series is one hundred percent safety and nothing else. What you do to your car you knew if you did it wrong or not i'm I we just making sure you're not gonna get hurt in that race car we're gonna look we look at the cage the four point cage on the inside we can see it we try to make sure ain't nothing gonna if you're getting a wreck break off and kill you seat belt shit like that we're just trying yeah. to make sure you're gonna be safe and but a lot of people know, you couldn't first, see that in yeah. race. go ahead a lot of people their first like if you see something wrong when you're taking a car at the end of the race you know why didn't you tell me they're in pre-tech Pre-tech is like, like Cole that said, is, for. exactly. All it is is a courtesy check for you, the driver, and that is it. It is not a, an official 100% your car is legal. 
We don't have enough time that, to do that. That's what, and even even that's if what you a guy can said, go over all the cars and pre-take, there's still so much you can change throughout Back the, the track. Track. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, this, the night. Yep. For an example, you know, Clayton Miller and Matt Markham, I've told this story a few times, but last year at Clarksville, they changed carburetors, tires, move bars, and I think shocks five or six times in a night just to run two different classes. So, wow. So, you know, that tells you pre-tech doesn't do nothing because like, you know, they can change, rebuild the car basically every time it come off the track. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that, that guy, there was a guy down the other night cussing and hollering at me. Why the hell you didn't tell him in free race tech? You seen it? I said, well, honestly, we didn't check the damn suspension. We were checking the seat belts. The fire seems for all the safety stuff. The winning net, they got one. We wasn't checking the car. We was looking at the tires to make sure they were eight inch tires. And that, what, what do you want me to do? Take your whole car and then let you know if you're legal? I mean, they, we don't have time for that tonight. Like you said, no. I mean, it'd take all night to do 20, 30 cars. We got to uh, put the rule book for it. I'm sure you've seen it before, Cole, but Don does a lot of our pre taking for us. And he's got a stick that's got a couple measurements on it, yep. a piece of PVC pipe. Yep. He checks a couple things, make sure deck height, check seat belts, make sure all the safety stuff's good, and we go. I mean, whether what's behind that is up to you as a driver to make sure that you're right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That, that's all we can do is to keep them safe. And the other night, we had a few of them with old seat belts, and I I told him I said this is the last last straw with the seat belts, man. Come on, they're a hundred dollars for a set of seat belts. You gonna go out there and die over a hundred bucks or get hurt? I mean, yeah. Y'all know it just like we know. You take a chance every time you get that car to get hurt. Real quick, we got well, a few Billy, comments on the. Uh, what you got, Cole? There's several people who say you know this here is the perfect like why the the series should handle the payouts instead of the track, and that's just not uh, feasible. It's not feasible to do that way. Even if the the track writes you a check for the purse and you distribute it. At the end of the night, it's still, you know. Well, the, the thing is, 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 you know, a series ain't going to carry that even, much cash with them to a track. I mean. No, I mean, even if you want to write checks out, you know, that's an option. But we don't have the the staff or the people to do it. You know, we got other know, jobs. We, we've had the Mississippi Street Stock Series for 12 years. This is our 12th year. And I've never had an issue with, with purse being paid. Yeah. I had one track one time. They came up to me and said, Shannon, this is what you told me the purse was, and they handed me all the money. Yeah. And I went to a certain location at track, it was at Southern Raceway, and I paid everybody right out of what they handled us, you know, which it was right. It was 100% right. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you go to the pay window and you sign for your money and everything else. Yep, you sign so, in with the track, you know, the track, you know, you, you know, we're using some of their personnel to help run. Exactly. The, so it's, uh, the joint now, venture more that, that or less. Somebody, said, somebody told me the other night, on these tracks that you don't know the owners or trust them, you need to get get the money, the payout money, after the driver's meeting, and you pay them out, and that way everybody has their money. You can't well, do I that. It shouldn't I'm going to tell you why that. you can't you do that. Do that. I, well, I'm going to tell you why you can't do that. Some tracks, when they open the gate, they're starting with a zero balance. Yep. And as they're gaining money throughout the night, that's what's paying the perks. So at driver's meeting, they might not have enough money to, to pay everybody out. You know, they're still stuffing they, envelopes. That's how they do it with sprint you know? cars, ain't it? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I know I've no, seen them before no. walk up and tell them what their money when they get there. That way they no, don't know they guaranteed their money. Uh, I don't think so. We'll find out. we got sprint cars because coming they, they out of here a couple of weeks, a couple at uh, I-55. You'll find out then. Yep. <laughs> we'll be ready for it though. Yeah. That, but, uh, that, that's what, that's what they was telling me that the sprint cars do. Uh, another track owner told me that, that they want their money when they get there, that whatever, they know they're going to get paid, but they got to guarantee so many cars too, you know? Now there and is a guarantee with them. Like whoever shows up at the gate, they get a certain amount of money, no matter what per sprint car, you, you got to pay per sprint car, basically, you know, like if let's say 25, it. 25 or 28 uh, show up, you pay the regular purse and everybody from their back gets a certain, so like 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th gets a certain amount of money. You have to pay them. So well, that's good. They say, no, they're getting something to get home with, you know, but that's when you hope that, you know, you get 17 or 18 show up. <laughs> 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 
But Cole, Cole, any other questions from been up there for Factory South? Um, had fourteen last time y'all raced. Yeah, it was ten or twelve last time. We've only had three races, I think, so far. The only one that was bad was the first one. That yeah, every other of, race has been double digits. It's been getting up, going going up each race. So it's uh definitely been improving. We, we have several that's gonna travel to every race we got, and uh. I haven't posted the points yet this week because um, the track would not give me the results the other night because I don't know a lot of those locals that was there to put them on points. They want, they I'm wouldn't having even a message give you a up to people to find out. They wouldn't even give you a... That's wrong, man. Do they have transponders there to look, hand score? They had transponders, but they kept trying to hand score it. And, and I noticed once or twice I thought something was wrong with it, but... I couldn't verify it because they wouldn't let me look at the computer. You know what I mean? They was like, here, this is the lineup. This is the lineup. And I was like, no, nah, let me look at the computer. And they like, no, nah, this is the lineup. I was like, all right. They ain't on my race pack or anything else. So Billy, have you, been able to get, have, you, have you been able to get all the, the, the finishing order correct? I've got them all but two, uh, two guys, um, a number 12 white car and a number 11 car. I got it wrote down in my book. Um, I think they told me the guy in the 12 car was something Lopez. I don't, I don't know his first name. I got to get, if somebody out there knows the finishing order or how I took a picture of it, send it to me because I, I need it because I don't know two of the drivers. I had to yeah, ask they, they don't have my race stuff. pass, do they? Uh, they no, don't have my race pass? They don't have. Yeah, that sucks. Got Billy McCurry yeah, that, here asking that, 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 if that, uh, that. Billy's got any folks coming to Duck River next weekend for the 5,000. There you go, Billy. Well, tell you know anybody tell going him to that I got, a, I got a few of them that's going up there. I want to go, but um, uh, uh, Hancock Whitney Bank told me I can't afford to go. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to Pine Ridge? No. Oh, we've already asked that about Pine Ridge. Pine Ridge, um, I had a phone call from Pine Ridge yesterday. I'm just going to leave it at that. Everybody can go from there what that means, you know. Okay. Me, me and another guy got a phone call that runs with me. And and I, I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't want I don't want to surprise nobody on here. Okay. But I do got my tool bag with me. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, Cole? Uh, I'm trying to go through the Cole. comments here. Hey, Bill, I do want to tell Cole, you something. Cole, man. Cole. Yes, sir. It was. It, it could have been easy the other night to to just throw your hands up in the air and fold, but man, I am proud of you that you stuck to your guns and and you did what you felt was right for your drivers and for the series. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't know what to do there, and I think you handled yourself well. And from all the comments that I'm seeing, uh, everybody is still behind you 100%. Absolutely. So good job on that, man. I, tell, I appreciate everybody believing in me and and giving us a shot to put these races on and just stick with us we'll have some good racing i know we got to weed through a lot of bullshit but we, we will get there and and have it 100 percent. you know what i mean we, we we just it's like a green race team we're gonna have to it's, bugs has got to be worked out of it that's it right it is what it is you know hell i've been doing this for 11 12 years and i still have bugs pop up every now and then you know it's just how do you how yeah. you take that problem and you come up with a solution and, and try to find the best way to be fair to everybody. I mean, hell, we had a, a little yeah. incident at Pike County at the last Mississippi Street Stock Series race. You know, we lost the internet and couldn't time cars in. So we just, it's just how you adapt and, and how you try to make it fair to everybody, I think is. How did you fix that deal? We just, uh, how you drew, we lined up heat races and then passing points. That's why I like it. That's why yeah. I like it. We're going to stick with everybody like the, you always have one or two that's going to bitch about a peel draw. Well, the first thing, I, I didn't think about that. The first thing we had a problem with when we got there to that racetrack was, I wish I would have shut the hell up, but two of the guys that travel, travel with us came to me he's like, Billy, they're not charging us no entry fee. They won't take our money. I'm like, well, uh, y'all got to pay an entry fee. I said, we, we got our money. We want to pay it, but they're telling us they can't take it. I have, I literally have to go to the pay window and say, hey, lady, it's a $100 entry fee, and they want to put the transponders on there. Track wants to put them on there. I was like, 
I mean, whatever. That's one hundred fifteen dollars. Yeah. And she's like, "Oh, well, I didn't know. We can't, we can't do that." I said, "It's on. It's, it's entropy. It is what it is." Then you had the locals. Some of them were mad as hell. They raced for three hundred dollars a week, and they mad when they raced them for two thousand. Got to pay a hundred dollar entropy. Mm. I don't understand that. You Just got a lot of people. Ten guys over, you got ten guys that spent three hundred dollars in gas to get there. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're going. We're just going to stick with it. Do right by. It. Go by the rules, and hopefully everybody just sticks with it and and comes and races with us. I mean, I'm trying to be as honest as possible as I can with it. You're doing I mean, good. One of the guys that I know, one of the guys I know personally, the other night, I, I'm gonna be honest. I made a bad call on the guy. I put him to the rear. I thought he spun a guy out. He he had to go get. Luckily, he got a flat tire, uh, a, like a quarter lap right on the other curb before that had a flat tire. And he had to go off the track anyway. So he wasn't mad about it, but he was over there changing that tire and calling my phone. I'm like, who the hell's calling my phone? It's been ringing off the hook. I said, like, what is it? Who is, what's wrong? He's like, you asshole, you put me to the rear. I didn't touch him. I said, yeah, you did. He said, no, I didn't. I said, yeah, you did. Well, I watched the video Sunday, Shane. He did not do it. Yeah, and that's, me and Cole, did, me and Cole, we talked about that this week, didn't we? The, the problem is, is, is the angles that you're sitting at isn't necessarily the, the correct i mean you're not going to get every call right i mean it's just not going to happen especially if you're racing with a fault rule yeah and they, and they they act like we uh i mean he wasn't mad about it at all but at the time he said you asked so you put me to the rear i didn't do it i was like i'm sorry I, the next day I was like, i'm sorry because i was arguing without night yeah you did man just get your tire on and come on back out and he came back out and i don't mean he finished like 12 to 13 he didn't do that well but I, that was my bad call. I said, man, I'm not in a helicopter watching it. I'm up I'm up high as I can get to watch. I'm not in a helicopter. Yeah. Hell, the last race we had at, uh, at Magnolia, the Golden A, I had to put somebody to the rear, and it was the wrong call, evidently. <laughs> what they said, wasn't it? Yeah, it happened. <laughs> yep. Ch Old Rodney Wings wears up and down <laughs> that it was the wrong call, and it, it probably was. Sh Shannon's, got a few, Shannon's got a few of these out the winning from me several times. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It wasn't me. If it was me, it was on accident. It wasn't. On, it wasn't all me. There's only one fix to that, and people don't want to go to that fix. What's that? Both people to the rear. The no fault rule. No fault rule. You stop on the track, you go to the rear. I watched the race last night. The uh, uh, what is Macon, it? Flow racing it? across America at Macon. Yeah. And I felt so bad for Spencer, man. I mean, Spencer, and there was another car there too. Two cars spun out from that track so small, you have nowhere to go. And they oh, had yeah, to stop to avoid the it, it, from hitting them. Well, Spencer takes off first, so you would think Spencer would be lined up in front of those guys that spun out, because I think that's what Lucas and World of Outlaws do. If you get out of the wreck and you pull off and you go get lined up, that's where you're going to fall in line. Well, they put Spencer behind everybody. And I just... Oh, wow. The well, no I don't fault believe rule, a no-fault no uh, rule. I don't believe in that. Somebody's always at fault. Cars yeah, don't wreck themselves. I agree. But what drivers have to realize is that what we see up in that tower and what our track workers see might not be 100% the correct call. We're not going to get every one of them right. We're going to try our best to get everyone right. And some of them, it's usually about 80% of them. They're going to, it's so easy that you don't even have to make a call. You know what the call is. Yep. You're only talking about 20% oh, of yeah. the calls. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get some of, wrong, some of them wrong. I mean, it's just part of the system. You just got. You know, a handful of people trying to watch 20, 30 cars sometimes. And what's that one person that you that you made the call? They're watching one car. Exactly. Their family member, whoever. We're watching 20. Yeah. You know, so it, it does make a – it makes it yeah, tough. Exactly but right. I wouldn't do it any other way. I think the, 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 uh -huh. the fault rule is the best way to go. Yeah, me too, me too. I, I had one one time at the Deep South uh, in that 51 race. A guy dumped me, completely just dumped me on – I mean, he dumped me. Was that the time well, you they, ran they away from the wrecker to... and the tow truck and everything else? <laughs> and then you pulled up to Billy and... Hey, I... <laughs> hey, you know what they did? They went to the driver that dumped me and asked him what happened. He said, I wrecked him. <laughs> he said it was an accident. I spun him. And they gave you your spot back. <laughs> I told you. Gave him my yeah. spot back. I said, I told you. I did not. I got dumped. You said in the driver's meeting, if you get dumped, you get your spot back. I'm literally started at 30th, and I'm already up to 4th. 
from 30th. Yeah. And that 50 lap race, I'm like, and we're like 10 laps to go. I said, I'm not going to the rear. <laughs> Hell no. Yeah. And 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 they, they they went back there and asked that driver, and he said, "Yep, I spun him." Okay, you get your spot back. All that, all that bullshit over. All you had to do was just ask. You know, you just made an assumption that I wrecked the guy. I mean, I got I wrecked on my own. Well, I'm gonna tell you, Billy. I mean, I mean some of it. it's some of it is, and I hate to say this, but you got some people at racetracks that just think because Billy Walker's involved in something, it's automatic his fault. You know what I mean? And it sucks. Oh. You know. <laughs> I get that a lot, lot. I get yeah. that a lot. Now I'm trying to, I'm trying to be the good guy now. Uh, you know, I told you I was in that other car, one that spun me out. I wanted to, I moved the horns about came out, put them back to him, you know. But I didn't. I said that, well, that I guy might come race with me one day, you know. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That was that. Why not too? <laughs> well, Billy, anything else but you yep. want to tell the tell the folks out there? Uh, what you got coming up? Uh, this. We got the the pike race is our next race. Um, uh, this weekend, if 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 they're not racing anywhere, go to pike. I mean, go to Pine Ridge and race for five thousand. If you don't do good, at least you, you got some test time. Go to Duck River next week for five thousand, and then two weeks later you got another twenty five hundred with a big option coming from the rear that we hadn't announced how much it is yet, but it's going to be very big. You just about double the purse to come from the rear. Damn. So it might be another five thousand dollar race there too. Hey, what's I mean, that twenty thousand win for the start race? That was last weekend, the one that didn't get promoted very much. Oh, I didn't. Did, who won? <laughs> Ronnie Lee? Uh, Ronnie Lee Newsom. Yeah, Ronnie Lee, won't you come it. race with us over here? I know they're probably watching. Tell him, come on over here and race with our guys. Yeah, he needs to come to the Nationals for sure. Yep. Well, all right, Billy. Well, we appreciate you. We appreciate, yeah. We appreciate you coming on and, uh, and, and explaining the situation, man, I hate it for you, but I am proud of you that you, you stuck to your guns and you stood up for your series. And uh, hopefully everything will go better the rest of the year. Uh, I know we get to see you June 27th through 29th, 2,500 to win at Pike County. So excited about that. Uh, anything else you want to speak on? Yeah, I want to. Yeah, to, uh, when you ain't doing nothing tomorrow, I want you to go to CVS and get cold some cough medicine. <laughs> Help him with that with that awake apnea. Awake apnea, that's right. <laughs> Poor gold. Hey, every time I I on here with him, he sounds like a seven year old man coughing on here. <laughs> I try to mute it when I can. When I know what's coming, but it uh, I guess it doesn't work out all the time. No. Cole, did you ever work yeah. at a coal mine or anything? No, I just I don't. I guess I'm fat and allergies and. <laughs> I don't know yeah, what it is. <laughs> now, I think asthma said to wake up you. Wake up, that's right. There's jokes I got, but I can't say them on y'all's podcast. I'll get you in person. <laughs> All oh, right, but we'll appreciate you, Billy, and uh, we'll see you at the racetrack here in a few weeks. All right, just tell anyone if they got uh, any questions, give me a call. And I appreciate y'all having me on here, man. My wife's phone's blinking on red now. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I'll let you later. Thanks again, Billy. See you, Billy. Thank you, buddy. Well, Cole, Mr. Billy Walker, uh, man, I hate Always. that for him. Yeah, I hate it. Yeah, I, it's a... I really do. You know, and we both we both have series. You know, uh, I think, man, just I don't, I, I don't. I mean, what do you do? I just cut your losses and move on at that point. Do the best you can. I think he's did made the best out of a shitty situation you know everybody you know, else... i hate i hate anything negative for a racetrack because yeah. we don't need we don't need tracks closing we need racetracks you know what i'm saying to get more people involved in the race and stuff like that but uh that's just not good for our for our our sport you know at all you know doing that and i and i, I still firmly believe if that track would have stood with what Billy was saying and DQ their own family member, mm -hmm. their level of integrity or whatever you want to call it jumps well, leaps and bounds. Up, right. Yes, it goes way up. Yep. Now you got locals question whether they want to race there anymore because of that. You know. Yeah, there's been several in the comments section. Section. I know us. Uh, yeah, we've had 109 comments tonight so far. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no. 
Good God. This has been our most viewed uh, live video so far. But yeah, there's been several locals say they're not going back and not going to support the track. And and I hate that, man. Yeah. God, dog, I hate that. I mean, I've seen some races there like, uh, I think Hunt the Front's gone there before, or maybe they've raced there. I don't know if the series has gone there, but, you know, and it seemed like a great facility. I mean, just, mm, mm, mm. I just ain't good for, for anything, really. No, maybe the, just hopefully they can learn and, and do better. Do better in the future and. You know, like you said, it's never, it's not a good situation at all, but if, it's, you know, if anybody can learn from it coming out the other side, then turn it into positive is about all you can hope for at this point. Yep. For sure. <laughs> well, Cole, uh, what you find something else, you still get yeah, comments. We got Ricky Johnston said, put Billy on there every week and you'll get these kind of comments. <laughs> he brings yeah, attention Billy's... to the factory stock racing. Bill, yeah. Uh, and, and look, I love it, man. I, the street stocks and factory stocks is what keeps racetracks open, man. Yeah. So any kind of, I mean, that's negative attention. We really don't need that type of attention, but. But there was a know, positive that come, you know, that, yeah, it was a negative situation, but him sticking by his drivers and sticking by the rules and not letting the track over. You know, them. any doubt, but here, here's what, I, here's what did come about from it. In my opinion. Yeah. Any doubt that you thought that you were going to be treated unfairly or not get the proper treatment by running Billy's series yep. just off of a little bit of his reputation. I mean, they call him badass for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, to me, that wipes all that out. There's no doubt that when I go to race there, I'm going to be treated fair. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure our next two drivers meetings, you know, we got two races before their series comes to our track. I'm going to make sure to highlight our, Packers style guys like look you know make sure your shit's right before you come you know we do try to check them and make sure they're you know that they're legal for all rules but you know if you're not right they're going to disqualify you and they have final say you know I love it when a series comes to our track because we don't got to fool with that class it does kind of kind of have to give you a break from having to do all that yeah you know I get to sit up there and let him you know I'll hand him the receiver and the radio I'll probably still score it but, I love the fact that Billy's doing the race receiver because yeah. I'm going to tell you, Billy is one of the world's worst with a race receiver when he's racing. About listening. Billy, move back two spots. Billy, move back two spots. Yep. Damn it, Billy, move back two spots. And and normally we just have to get a track official out there to, to move him back, right. you know, but. Just funny uh, seeing the other side. Of it. <laughs> see it, yes. Yeah, seeing it, what's the word I'm looking for? The, re the roles be reversed. Yep. Him on the other end of that, trying to tell people, you know, hey, get in line or do this or that. It's 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 quite entertaining. Yeah, I think every racer at some point should come to the power and uh, maybe we not, spin a wheel and 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 you know, <laughs> put put one. Well, yeah, you know, what if your name pops the, up, the chili bowl last year that they had a guy that made a victory lap after one of his mains or heat races or whatever, so they sent him to the infield. <laughs> with the vest and radio for an hour. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. You know, so he had to, he had to be a, uh, not a corner worker, what they call kind of track director or something like traffic that. director. Yeah. 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 That's pretty funny. So um, I think every, everybody should, uh, come to the tower at some point and at least hang out and see what all goes on. Yeah. Yeah. But man, uh, again, I think he handled himself. I'm proud of him. I'm, I really am. Cause it, it could, he could have easy folded right there yep. and said, throw his hands up and just say, whatever, you know, and left. It would have been very you know, easy to do it. Yes, it would have. Well, Cole got a busy weekend coming up for the Tuckasee street stock series. What y'all got going on this weekend? It will be going to Paducah Saturday night. Hopefully, uh, weather's looking a little iffy right now. We had talked about possibly bumping it up to Friday night when the weather's looking a little bit better. But after talking to some of the drivers that be traveling, we decided at, uh, wouldn't be beneficial to do it on such late notice. Notice, you know, several of them coming from three or four hours away on two days, three days notice. Uh, just wouldn't have been a good move. So we're going to stick it out for Saturday. Hopefully the weather will change. But uh, 
Yeah, we got 1,500 to win, 125 to start for the Kentucky State Street Stock Series. And uh, they got their other weekly classes for the. Uh, they'll be making their first appearance for the year. So we're looking for a good night there at Paducah. Yeah, Paducah's only raced one time this year, and they only ran, what, two classes that night? Yeah, they had their opening night was the uh, World of Outlaw Sprint Cars, and they had 5,000 to win supers. Super late models as well, and uh, so really, their local classes ain't even had a chance to hit the track yet this year. No, they haven't. Past couple of years, they've struggled to uh, pull very many uh, the local classes. I'm not sure if just the size of the track scares them, or the Fridays. I don't want to say scares them, but just steers them away because it is a damn. How big is this track? They say it's. Three eighths mile, but it's but a big three eighths. It's close big. to half, it's, maybe. It's very high banked. Uh, you know, it's a fast track, so hammer down, huh? Yeah, it's hammer down. They, it does. Once it cleans off, if they get enough cars where to clean up and slick off, and it's you know, I've seen three, four wide racing for the feature several times. But uh, I don't know if that or you know, last few years they've been on Friday nights. But this year they'll be running mainly Saturdays, so hopefully that'll uh, help them out. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out this weekend. But yeah, looking for a uh, good night for those guys in all classes as well. Well, I've had some guys call uh, this week uh, from around your area, and they said they're going to Paducah this weekend. So I think you're gonna have a pretty good, pretty good turnout. Yeah, I think we're gonna. I'm looking at. 22, 24 cars, maybe. Um, so, yeah, I'm, it should be a should be a pretty solid show. Good deal. Good deal. Well, we're going to try for the third time <laughs> to complete the 2024 Battle of States at Why Not Motorsports Park this weekend. 2,500 to win street stock race. Uh, the field has already been set. This is the race that back in March we rolled out, completed two laps, and the skies fell and started to rain, and we had to call the show. So we're going to completely line everybody back up to the starting order that, that you know, that we had for that race, and uh, we're going to try to do it for the third time. We had another weekend schedule. I think it was back in late March or either early April, and that weekend got rained out too, so we weren't able to do it then. So we're going to try it again, and guess what, Cole? I'm not going to ask you. Yep. Weather looking a little iffy for you all as well. Yes. <laughs> the Look, I looked at the weather, and over the next, like, 14 days, mm -hmm. there's one day that it might rain. And guess what day that is? Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the opposite for us. It's a, we got a chance starting Saturday and. Well, y'all have had some hellacious weather lately. Didn't I see where, uh, speaking of Mr. Clayton Miller, didn't they Didn't they have a storm come through his area? Oh, yeah. They had a like, tornado go through. Tornado, there. yeah. Yeah. I think it uprooted, uprooted a tree in his driveway. I don't think they had any damage to their house. Um, yeah, I want to say, I thought I seen where he posted something about like they've been without power for like 55 hours. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I know that uh, they had to cancel, cancel a church Sunday because they had a, Damage to the church. Wow. And, uh, that's a couple other things scheduled this week that they had to cancel because of damage and power. So, uh, yeah, I haven't yeah, heard Mother, of Mother Nature hasn't been nice to to racing this year at all. Uh, it was, hell, the tornado actually went probably 15 minutes. Uh, from the racetrack? From the track, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, me and... Uh, Melissa and Eli was at a, one of my buddies down the road, and then Rex called me and wanted to know what he was doing. So, you know, we're hanging out, whatever. He said, "Well, we're packing the shit up. We're coming to you." Wow. <laughs> he said he he was all went outside to let the dogs out or something, and uh, said he could hear the roaring of the tornado coming. So they Damn. packed the kids up, dogs, and. Yeah, it's pretty flat around where y'all are at, too. So you could probably see that stuff coming from pretty good ways, you know? Yeah, I don't know if he could see it, really, but you know, definitely hear it. And 
it, the sky was it was pitch black dark when it should have been mm. still pretty sunny out so it was a little iffy little little wild for a little bit but uh you know fortunately it didn't affect us but there were several that uh you know did receive quite a bit of damage yeah well hopefully y'all get all the power ran back i've i've been through that before with hurricanes down here mm-hmm. in in the on the gulf coast and it's not fun man not having i mean i'm one of those folks if i even get a little bit of sway i gotta take a shower before i go to bed and it's just miserable as hell yeah. for me when that when that does happen so i can only imagine uh but uh, back to why not we got the makeup race for the battle of the states for the mississippi street stock series this weekend and then we also have the uscs sprint cars coming to be the final race of their speed week uh expecting a a good field of those guys coming in. Um, just expecting a big night at Why Not, and hopefully we'll get it in. We have not raced since the beginning of May. And if we don't get the race this weekend, we won't get the race till the end of June. June 22nd will be the next shot we get to race. So we really need to get the race this weekend. Yeah, it seems like it's been just this early part of the year. I know it usually, you know, the spring weather is unpredictable and rainy, but it seems to be on steroids this year a little different huh yeah a little different but uh cole man you must be a busy man tonight that phone ding dinging a lot yeah it's uh is that telling your medicine's ready for your wake apnea at cbs (laughs) (laughs) oh well one of them was (laughs) melissa she went to Louisville and Cincinnati to see some of my family and oh that's right they're out of town yeah, vacation so at this week they're, that's on, right. they're on their way back they'll be back in about an hour yeah and then uh, Adam Elliott just messaged me wondering what I was thinking about the weekend so we're racing <laughs> tell him we're racing <laughs> get him fired up yeah. you're gonna have a good turnout uh something else started this week Cole this was kind of an exciting week for me uh we kicked off the entries Camping, reserve parking for the Southern Street Stock Nationals. And I'm going to tell you, every year I talk, me and Big Kenny talk about this. I'm like, Big Kenny, I'm getting a little nervous. I don't think we're going to hit uh, the numbers that we hit last year. You know, I just, you know, not very confident. And I'll be damned, Cole, if we didn't break the the, the first couple-day record for street stocks pre-entering for the Nationals. We're at 71 just three days in to take an entries, 71 straight stocks. And I want to say we got around 41 factory stocks right now, which they always pick up toward the end of the, of the registration period. So I'm not worried there at all. Uh, completely sold out of camping spots. Uh, and when I say sold out of camping spots, that's the, you know, the spots with power and, and, you know, full hookups. We're out of those. Uh, you can still come with your camper and, we got plenty of room, plenty of property to, to park your camper, run off a generator if you, if you want to. Uh, you're more than welcome to do that, and that is free. Uh, but just a unbelievable turnout for the first couple of days for the Street Stock Nationals. Yeah, what are you, three days in, you said, and already half started? Started, started Sunday at 5 o'clock, and we're here, what, Wednesday evening, and we're halfway to last year. And what's good about that, Cole, and I was, me and Rodney was talking about this earlier, you know, we say 71, right? Well, you're yeah. thinking, well, it's a lot of the same people that were there last year. I counted, and there's probably 16 on that list that have never been to the Nationals before. That's awesome. Yeah. So I know we say we we think street stock racing is dying, but uh, I'm not necessarily buying that. Definitely not for the street stock Nationals, that's for sure. Well, I think the other races are getting supported well, too. I mean, but... Yeah. It's definitely good to see. Let's see. Very, very, very excited for, for that race. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll I'm ready for end it. up with our 100, 120 cars and some great racing and just a good old time that yep. whole week. Yeah, I can't wait for it. Uh, I guess I need to put in for my vacation for that week. So. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? You should already have that done. Yeah. Like crap, you gotta crashing. be you, you. You need to be there Wednesday, because you want to know why. Why is that? Keeping it straight is gonna be coming live Wednesday afternoon. Ooh, why night, not? We? Part, we're gonna be live every night. Yeah, we're Wednesday, gonna do a show Thursday, every night. Friday. Yeah. Yep. Those three nights we're gonna have an after race show. Uh, 
and 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 try to get those who can't be there a little bit more information what's going on get some driver interviews and uh yeah you can expect that time. after yeah i think so too uh we'll do at least an hour show after each each night and just get it out there you gonna go live from the shady brady stage no <laughs> nope oh why not well, for one, this we'll be one. on Facebook. We'll be on Facebook, I'm sure. And I would, I don't want to go to Facebook jail. Be, uh, too, be too loud down there. Probably won't be able to to hear. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, we might. I mean, it's nah, it ain't no telling. <laughs> but we'll think, have something. What do you think, John? Do you think we need to go to the live on the Shady Brady stage? Hey, I think we just need to find us a place, maybe down in the infield somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere it says a little table up. Oh boy. And uh and and do it that way. That was my phone, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't mine. By the way, Cole, them logos going across the top look really good, man. I was just noticing that. Let's see who I got. <laughs> Cole? Yes, sir. That was a text for us. Oh, yeah. Certain business out there wanting to know what's the price to get your logo up at the top of there to run across that screen. So, uh, Mr. Johnson, we'll be reaching out to you soon. Good deal. Yep. So that's pretty cool. That's funny. We was just talking about that. And they do look good, man. Yeah. I mean, it really looks good. Like Kenny Morgan, Morgan Moose mm -hmm. Sports right there. So, Cole, we got anything else? We're about to our hour. Yeah, we're about Again, hours. thanks to Mr. Billy Walker for coming on and, and you know, give us an explanation of what happened at Buckshot. Thanks for all the folks that tuned in tonight and, and checked it out and, and hung out with us for a little while. We try to do this every week. We do have a YouTube channel also. If you don't mind, go on out and subscribe to that. Uh, we, did have a little side bet. we did have a little side bet on that, but that ain't helping. Hey, we could. <laughs> we could. No, I'm just saying. No, nope. I know where you're going with this. Twenty five, not twenty five hundred subscribers or followers on the Facebook page. No, let's do twenty five. Shave your head. I, I, I can't believe you didn't. Uh, <laughs> I did. Uh, <laughs> I did. I noticed you trimmed the beard. Hell, you got a little goatee going. You ain't even got the damn neck beard going anymore. Now, I trimmed up did a one all the way all over. That's what I'm talking about. I woke up Monday morning. And I said, "The hell with this. It's time to." Lose that shit started itching, getting hot. Yeah. Yeah. Was that a day that, hey, have you had the whole any chicken shit lately? Um, a week or two ago, maybe. I'm so not nothing sure. recently. Yeah. It's just funny how we talked about it on that one show and like, it just seems like every other day I'm talking to you, you're hauling chicken shit now. Yeah, I'm sure I'll get through tomorrow. I think my boss is <laughs> on here watching. So, uh, Oh, y'all got a couple of uh, farms to clean out? <laughs> I don't know. I think they had, apparently they had a, they was one of a couple trucks uh, Saturday to haul some, but. Oh, you busy. Yeah. We Tug to see Street Stock Series this weekend. Well, this, this past Saturday, Memorial Day weekend. Oh, okay, okay. You was out on the damn boat, wasn't yeah, you? We was on the boat my, for my one day of the year. Yeah. So, yeah. It was, Man, it was all we did time. was hung out. All we did this weekend is watch racing. I watched the show me all three nights and just hung out at the house. We didn't do anything, man. No racing other than what we could get on flow. Yeah, we went to the lake for a little while, got home and watched. Uh, what did I watch? Like the Modifieds of Fairbury. Yeah. Let me text Preston here real quick. Uh but yeah. Pretty good pretty good weekend. Of course ce celebrate Memorial Day. Uh watch the Indy five hundred and the Coca Cola six hundred. Yeah, was really hope, was, was really hoping Kyle Larson could get some laps in at Charlotte, but of course Mother Nature again took care of that. Uh, he kind of messed himself up in the 500 by speeding on pit road, which he kind of figured that was going to be a problem because 
I don't think you're allowed to practice that. Yeah, you know, I, they don't get to make passes like that. Yeah, I'm not sure how all that mess works. Yeah. But other than that, that's all I got, Cole. Come to Why Not Motorsports Park this weekend, USCS Sprints, make up race for the Battle of States for the street stocks. Uh, go to Paducah, support the Tucker City Street Stock Series, 1500 to win. Go to any of your local tracks. I think they got a, well, I don't think, I know. This weekend is the Factory Stock Nationals at Pine Ridge Raceway up in, who I don't know what part of Mississippi. I guess it's Pine Ridge, Mississippi. Uh, uh, a little bit, a little bit north of uh, Columbus, about 50 miles north of Columbus. Go support them this weekend if you can. Uh, yeah, just go to your local track, support them. Is it Pine Ridge, Mississippi, or what's it saying? I don't know. I can't spell right. That's P I N E R I D G E. There we go. Baldwin, Mississippi. Baldwin, Mississippi. I don't have a clue where that's at. About 50 miles north, maybe a little bit more than that than Columbus, of Columbus. So, uh, Cole, if you ain't gay, uh-oh. Yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> no, we're not get, doing it again. We, we done talked about it enough. Yeah. But anyway, Cole, again, uh, great show. Thanks to Billy. Uh, if anybody out there has anybody that wants to come on a guest, shoot us a, uh, a direct message if you want to sponsor the show. And get your name on that uh, tracker above the the template there. Give us a, uh, you know, send us a DM on Facebook. We'll get with you on that. And other than that, that's it for episode 12. We appreciate all of y'all and we'll see you next week.